We bless your name. We look up to you tonight for a special blessing from the throne of grace. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You can take your seat. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be speaking something like titled The Heart of a Servant. The Heart of a Servant. Of our significance. Let me say it again. People too often serve others from their own neurotic need for approval or for significance. For approval or for significance. Many people serve because of one approval or the other, or because they want to seek significance. They want to be significant. They have all different kinds of people that want to be a pastor for different reasons. <laughs> Some of you already know my story. <laughs> people like me, I don't want to serve God as a pastor. I am willing to serve God, but not as a pastor. If I want a pastor. That's why when anybody comes to me and say, I want to, I want to give you, I want to give you bishop, I want to give you this, I laugh. For what now? If I am a bishop, all my shop needs to serve anywhere I buy it. to say I want to be a big shop. Because so many bishops today, their shops are not selling. I don't want to be among the bishops that their shop is empty. Some doesn't even have a shop. Some they have shop, the shop is not selling. Some have a shop, the shop is scanty. I say, God, I don't want to be that kind of bishop. <laughs> what I know as a bishop, as by biblical standard, is that you have a diocese, a congregation, and that many people are so many thousands of people are there, and we have so many small, small churches here and there that are under the diocese that you pastor. That's where you can say you are a bishop. Now, every TikTok and Ali now become bishop. Each time I go to America, they keep telling me I want to make want to make a bishop. Say so, I don't want. Let my shop sell first. If I will be shopping. I don't want to be like so many people in this place. Then in America there are so many bishops without portfolio. So many bishops. You have to say it's a bishop. Before we are used to be intimidated when we hear somebody a bishop. But now, if I see a bishop, you lay out some bishop. <laughs> I was lay out some one bishop. <laughs> he was a lot of fun. I remember he's a bishop. I didn't move by. <laughs> and he's not for this bishop to follow that anointing. <laughs> and he didn't move by from his head. Yeah. How can a pastor lay out some bishop and bishop for? I said, no, God have mercy on me. I've forgotten that he's a bishop. Sometimes, I too did not guarantee us entitlement. <laughs> Are you following me tonight? Are you blessed, you God? <laughs> People always seek for any part. One young man came to me and said he wants to do a program that they want to give an award. And I discovered that they had wanted me to pray for him on some issues and to direct him on some issues. I should be led by the Holy Ghost. I said, no problem. I said, what you want to do is a good thing. But what I see is that the motive is to make money. I said, don't seek for any pass. I told the man, I said, don't seek for what? For any pass. Just be active and do the right thing. Don't seek for any pass. Don't, sorry, don't seek for prominence. Seek to be relevant. Don't seek for prominence, seek to be relevant. Don't seek for prominence, seek to be relevant. How do you seek to be relevant? Service. When you serve, you'll be relevant. People will know you. When you serve, people will know you. You become relevant. And then from there, prominence will be you. A lot of people, they don't want to serve, they just want to be prominent. Let us see happen. People are not in the secular world. And you see a president selecting his ministers, a political president selecting his ministers, he selects his ministers from those who serve. He doesn't go looking for somebody that doesn't was not there when he was struggling to become the president and come and put the person as a minister. It doesn't just happen. 
to the level of your service and your activity determines the level of your recognition to be prominent. One man met me in America. He said to me, Pastor, they are calling me to come home. I said, I see great things at home for you, but not now. If you go home now, nothing, you just waste your money. He said, ah, Why? I said, The problem is that it is too late for you to go home now. The time you're supposed to go home, you didn't go home. You procrastinated. Now, wait in this America and still be feeding your family. Let's go to America, I mean to Nigeria, to get money to even transport your fare back to America. It will be difficult for you to be begging. May your life not be like that. So I told him, I said, the problem now is that the time that you need to enter Nigeria is the time of service. Not the time when things are being distributed. It's the time of service. Then when you come to Nigeria and serve, and join a political group, a political campaign, and they see your level of service, then they will think this man deserves something. Are you, am I talking to people here? People want to come when they are sharing the cake. They don't want to come when the money of the cake is being made in the place of service. The cake costs something. And the cost of the cake was done by a certain people at work. It's somebody with me there. You don't want to just come out and then the people that are working, they will not put you on top of them. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. People always remember those who serve. I was saying something some years back. I said, I hate children of God that goes to office and then they will see that when they are supposed to be working, they are not opening the Bible. They are, look, you are not doing yourself any good. God will hate you for that. Yes, you are reading the Bible. And is it right to read the Bible? Yes, it's right to read the Bible. But don't read the Bible at work. Read the Bible before you leave your house. And pray before you leave your house. When you get to the office, get to work. There is time for everything. Can't go and hide under the finger of pain, and under the finger of reading the Bible, and work when you're supposed to be working. People are supposed to pay you for that job, for God's sake. You are not justifying the payment. Don't go and be reading the Bible, and then your boss wants to give you an assignment. He sees you reading the Bible, he goes back. He comes back again. The other that let me send this one to do another thing. He sees you praying. Like a pastor, like a pastor. Even the tongue is, is fake. <laughs> and at the end of the day, when the time to when the time to promote you comes, you think they will promote you? They will not promote you. You can pray for all I care. They will promote you. They will go and do for somebody who was there for them, and they will promote that person over your head. That's the problem of many Christians. They are not smart. They are not smart. They are not smart. They, they don't have what we call smart work. Be smart at your work. Don't be tall at your work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't have negative motive for selfish. This is what I'm talking about. Don't seek for approval. Don't seek for significance. Seek just to serve God unconditionally. Based on your covenant relationship with God. And when God sees your heart of, the, of, of your heart being covenanted to Him, I tell you, heaven shall be opened over you. God is more eager to bless you. God is more eager to make you relevant. God is more eager to make you prominent. God is more eager to make you significant. But the truth is, God wants to see your heart and your intent of service before opening heaven over you. Come on to see how much sacrifice you can do for his kingdom. Number two concern. We need to identify and work towards serving the real needs of others and not neurotic ones. does not want us to meet some want. There is a difference between needs and want. God wants us to meet needs of others, not some neurotic wants of others. One day somebody came to me, he saw that I have about 
some few cars back in my house. Came to me and said, Pastor, can you give us one of these your car? I laughed. Doesn't even know the plan I have for this car. He doesn't even know whether I'm the owner of the cars or whether I'm if there's one money I collected from my brother that I used to buy that car just for me to sell to have a turnover. Just some car in front of my house and he's asking me to give them the, the one of the cars. I said, You see people. And because I said no, it's not possible, and I don't have to explain why. Because you don't know the reason why those cars are there. I saw some level of attitude. I want to give you a card. You have not even served, not one penny, not pay, no service. You can't see any service in the, the heart of this person. I'm talking about. I want me to give you a car. If I want to give somebody a car, we look for somebody else who I've seen that is having. If I want to give somebody something, to give cash on the problem, I'll give you cars. But if I want to give you a car, give you a car based on your service level, you won't give me the one to ask me. I just call and say, come, let's take this one. Heart of servant. Heart of a servant. Amen. Amen. Some people follow Jesus for political reasons. You know why? Hello? Hi. Uh -huh. You people have been wondering where again that will happen, but by the way, I'll show you. Because I know that some of you will be asking this question. God has helped us in the school of the Holy Spirit to dissect scriptures. Sure. Some people follow Jesus because of political reasons. Number one of which is that those that woman that came to Jesus in the scripture that we read in the text came for political reasons. She had a mind that Jesus was going to be the king, and that she wanted her two sons to be beside Jesus. Political reasons of following. The Bible says she worshipped, she worshipped them, desiring something. Just see that. For political reasons. Not that she worshipped Christ because Christ is God, she worshipped Christ desiring something. Hello? We are not saying it is bad to desire. There is power of desiring. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? But much more than desiring, God does not want you to worship Him because of what you desire. God wants you to worship Him because of a covenant relationship. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Sometimes some of you are where you are because you are worshiping God for wrong reasons. You are serving God for wrong reasons. Hello. If you have understanding of, of what I'm saying, your life will be, will be changed and transformed. I can still show you, open with me to the book of John chapter 6, verse 15. Let me show you something there. They wanted the yoke of Rome to be removed. Huh? They are following Christ because they feel that the yoke of, the, of, of, of Rome can be removed by Jesus. They said that that's one of the reasons why Jesus came to remove the yoke of Rome. The yoke of the leadership. You know the leadership of Rome. You know how it is. And so they felt that one of the reasons why Jesus came was to break that yoke and destroy that yoke and remove that yoke. So they were following Christ for that reason. Yes, we have a, a, a king now that's going to oppose the authority of the ruler of Rome. Are you hearing what I'm talking about, people of God? Now, when evening came, his disciple went down to the sea. Give him the next verse. Verse 15, I said. Verse 15, I said. John chapter 6, verse 15, yes. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, did you see that? They want to make Jesus king. Why are they trying to make Jesus king? Because they wanted to remove the yoke of Rome. He said, he departed again to the mountain that he shall belong. He left them because he saw in their heart that they were following him to make him something because they have an agenda in their heart. Hello. Are you following me? He left them. He left them. They want to make him a king. They followed him. 
because they have an agenda of removing the yoke of the Roman rulership. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Amen. So they follow Jesus for political reasons. Some follow Jesus for the reason of food. In fact, those who follow Jesus for food reasons, there are many. Anyway, it's not bad to do that. Because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to who? First, to the poor. So the poor is expected to follow. One day, one man of God said to me, Pastor Gina, you said that God has called you to raise financial giant. He said, Because God has called you to raise financial giant, he said, Me, I have sent to the king. He said, that's why only those who have money come to me. I go to only those who have money. He said, for you, Pastor Jesus, you said that God said if you raise the financial giants in his kingdom, all people will be attracted to you and say, it's okay. As long as when they come, they are not in Nepal. They are not to make the wealth, they will be there. And that's what I've been experiencing. And I find joy in poor people coming to me. That's the calling of God. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do what? To preach the gospel to number one, the poor. So it is not wrong for your life to be attracted by anointing to people that are less privileged. For much more than that, what we are saying is that don't follow because of this. Because if that is not a place, you will last life very fast. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Follow because you are convinced. Follow because you are truly, truly and sincerely convinced. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, regardless, the Lord regularly challenged their impure motive. The Lord regularly challenged their impure motive. He does not castigate them, He does not judge them, but He always teaches them how not to follow based on what they are following. He only teaches them the right way to follow and the right motive to inculcate. In order for their life to be truly transformed by heaven. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Very important things to consider. Those who have need for significance, prominence, they follow, and that's the wrong motive. Number two, those who have needs for material things, for kind of things. And because of that, they decide to follow. These are two major wrong things of the most concern to me. That is, and that's why in our church today we have had situations. There was a time that our church was getting so full when we were in the hotel. So full that even we had the chairs for people to sit. Why? At that particular point in time, we pastors gathered ourselves together and we decided to go and be picking people, giving them money to that. And then we were doing that. And people were coming to church. People were coming to church. People were coming to church. They would, be, they would gather together on Sunday morning. Vehicles would go and bring them. We were organizing it. It was costing us money. It was costing me a great deal, personally speaking. It was entering into my personal pocket. Because the church did not even have the capacity to handle it all in court. So sometimes I had to put my investment into it. And at the end of the day, <laughs> when I realized that, hey, the way I'm going, I don't think this thing can help me. In fact, what else made me change my mind was one young man came in the course of all that time. He, he came the first day to church and he came to me and said, Pastor, uh, when I need money, my father, what I don't know where I say that, I can't remember. No one to lie on the copy. Pastor, you know who died? When did he say that? He said, His father died, that he wants to go home. I said, okay, what do you want us to say, sir? I don't have money, this and that. I give him money. He said, I'll be back next week, this and that. When I buried my father, that was the last day I ever set my eyes on him. The first and the last day that I ever set my eyes on him. I said to myself, I said, these people, they are just coming and looking for those who they will use. They are just users. We can help you because of the kingdom. The Bible says, help the people of the household first. And that's why we do what we want to do. But when it becomes the agenda of men, we run away from it. Amen. Then I changed my mind. I said, okay, you know what? All the people that cannot come to church, well, we just, it just die in. No matter. We stop carrying people. We stop doing all that. And then the church will return back to status quo. 
Amen. Let the people that truly love Jesus, let them come. When they come in the midst of challenge, they will be here. When they come in the midst of trouble, they will be here. When they come in the midst of sickness, they will be here. In the midst of life, they will be here. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we are going somewhere. God will surely deliver us. In Jesus' name. I spent so much time. And I have some other things I want to say. But let's pray that. Conditions that in that Sabbath, let me put, I won't preach much again. I'll just mention it. And then I do it so that we can pray. You know that time has come with this. Condition that will hinder your Sabbath truth. Number one condition the desire for status, the desire to be, to feel important will not make you. It will hinder you from serving God well. Your desire in life is just to, if you, do, you are a status, you just want to be, you want to arrive as status. You cannot serve God well. Because your agenda is always in the standard. I was telling somebody, I said, if how many of you they say, come and take five million naira on a Sunday? They say you must come between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock a.m. If you don't come between 10 a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m., you will not be given this five million. I say, how many of you will still come to church and say, I damn you this money? I line up, I stand on the pulpit. I will not go for that one. I will not go. If God be God, let him keep, let him help me in my finances. Yeah, that's why a lot of pastors are missing it. Money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Quest for, for status. Quest for status. Quest for wealth. Will not make you sad God well. That's the truth. Though. It's one of the conditions that's hindering a lot of people. A lot of people choose to go to the job, to the work that God has given to them. You have worked from morning till evening. You still cannot come to church. You are still working. We can work. If God can take that work within a second from your hand. Say you didn't come to work, say it's my work. If you didn't come to church, it's my work. Who holds that work? When you are supposed to work, don't leave that, you don't pray. But when you are supposed to leave your job and come to church, leave your job and come to church. God asked of me when I was sad. The reason why I can preach, why I'm preaching is that I've been a businessman, I've been, I've been a, a, a worker in, in a company. You know, thank God for people like us who have not even worked in government, so I don't know all this government thing. I've, I've worked all my life in private sectors. And above all, I work in a multinational company. Private sectors know how disciplined they are. I will fast 40 days without food, and I'm still going to work. I will pray two 40 night vigil, and I will still go to work. I'll still get to work in the morning. I'll still, sometimes I will want to, I will want to sleep on the steering in the morning. When I'm driving to work, I say, Holy Ghost, take over. And when I say, Holy Ghost, take over like this, my eyes will be clear. Until I get to the office before the doors you will be clear. Liba Shate, Liba Who understand? God can't say, one thing they know is this. You can't give me no work when I'm, when it's time to. They know you now, they know you. They know, how can you give me work? My empty cannot give me work. My empty, no, but not, see you. Cannot give me work when he knows I'm going to turn. He knows I won't take it. He, he knows my heart. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows my heart for God. He knows, in fact, I preach it in the inner presence. No, no matter how much devotion, and they will give me opportunity to preach in the, in the office. People want that we are preaching in the presence of my CEO. I said, nobody can stop me from going to God. I am in love with it. That's why there is no devil that can stop me to be blessed by God. I do love this God. It is impossible for me to be stopped to be blessed by the same God. How crazy you are with God determines how crazy God can bless you. And my CEO cannot come to me and come and tell me, please do this work when it's time for. For service, it's not possible. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Number two, human strategies to meet one's own needs. You always want to strategize your own way to make your to get your needs. You are wasting your energy. Leave your need for God. God is more than enough. God is more than enough to meet all your needs. Since the day I knew that my need is not my need, it's actually God's need. Hello. I got to a point in my life when I left it all for Jesus. Food, feeding, my children, I left them all for Jesus. I dedicate all my children before God like this. I dedicate them. My, uh, Rebecca was born when I was not around. When I got back to Abuja, I put Rebecca up like this and dedicate her to God. First thing, first thing, even if I start looking at the face line, which face? Who give the face? God. We turn it back to him. And then I begin to do face very well. Is this child is able to me or is able to mother? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't be overwhelmed by your needs. God can take care of it. Don't be overwhelmed by your needs. Don't be possessed by your problems. Your problems will come and they will go. God has the capacity to solve them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number three, a poor concept of self worth. A poor concept of self worth can make you, can hinder you from serving God well. You do, you don't understand your self worth. How can I? How can I see myself? I see best pastor go to please the exchange Bible. They are changing their destiny. I was sharing this thing. I was watching. Hey, somebody was telling me. How that men of God these days? That's why we, we can preach with any Bible. I only God knows how many Bible I'm using to preach. I have so many Bible. I don't have one Bible. Some pastor is only one Bible they have forever. Whether the Bible is decaying, they must use it to preach. Because if they don't use that Bible to preach, power will not move. <laughs> Their power is likely dependent on the Bible they are carrying. <laughs> can you imagine? Very, oh my God! A poor understanding of self worth. I will go and appear before the devil that I know that is not a great, and I will be looking for God for me. Whatever God cannot give to me, may I not have it. I reject anything that God did not give to me. I refuse it. Well, you see them, they, they, they will tell them, carry it down. I hear this thing, I will almost weep. They said they will bring their own Bible that they are using to preach. <laughs> and they will give it in exchange of another Bible that they will now begin to use to preach. Now, they have actually exchanged their destiny for the devil. They may experience some level of power and manifestation. In fact, it's magic. I have said it, I am a prophet of God. Bishop David Lillian was a prophet of God. He doesn't call phone number. Jesus was a prophet of God. He does not call nobody's number. He does not call anybody's mind color. Account number is 00345. What are you looking for in my account? Your account balance is now 350 million. You need to show 250 million on the body. What are you looking for there? It's demonic. That one is not the prophet of God. Your mind is blue color. What are you looking for? So you are dissecting the interior part of a female of an opposite sex. You are a demonic prophet. This person is going on the YouTube. All the time will see what I'm saying. I am speaking with all magnanimity. Magnanimity. Whatever you call it. I'm not a demonic prophet. Anyway, they read it, let them or hear this person, let them laugh. Yes, sir. I speak Holy Ghost English. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, praise God. I say, Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you have self worth. Respect yourself. I boast in the Lord my God. Let me speak it. He said, I boast in the Lord my God. I can't see myself one. I'm, I'm to find myself chilling to the devil. 
What can the devil offer you? The devil will give you a car and he will take away your head. What is the incest of you having a car and there is no head to wear the car on? Is that not stupidity? Rise on your feet, everyone. Understand yourself what in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Oh. Number four, self-centered living. Self-centered living will stop you from service. Self-centered living. Everything about you, just me, myself, and I, is a problem. You can't serve God well. Me, myself, and I, how does it, how is it convenient for me? How is it, uh, will this thing probably give me this? Will it give me that? Will it do this for me? Will it do that for me? You are calculating your own benefit. You are just a calculator in the hand of the devil. 